Hey, what's up everybody? In this video we're going to be talking about shapefiles. What to do to send a shapefile to somebody. What to do when you get one from somebody. Drawbacks of shapefiles. The history of shapefiles. What makes up a shapefile. All of that good stuff. Right now I'm going to be talking about what a shapefile is and how you can send one to someone. First thing you need to do is know where it's located in your file system. Here I have this line shapefile. If I right click that and go to properties, I can go to source and it gives me the path right there to my shapefile. Now when I go to my file system, I see I have all these files in that location that we saw in the properties, and they all have the same file name with different extensions. The extension is the part after the dot. You're going to need all of these files except for the lock files. The lock files are here because I have that layer in a map with a project open. If I close that project, Let's see if those lock files go away. Yep, they went away. So if you see lock files, you can you can leave ArcGIS Pro open or ArcMap. ArcMap's going to lock them too. You can leave it open, just don't include those when you send them to someone. So to send a shapefile, the best way to do it is to select everything that has that same file name with all of its various extensions. Select all of them, right click, and send to compressed zipped file. Then it's gonna automatically name it line shape file. Then if you open that up, you see you have all of those, those files inside. And then you can add that, that zip file to an email as an attachment. So here's an email I sent to myself with the zip file as an attachment. It shows up just as one, one file, and I can download that and then open it up and copy all the files to a, to the same location on your drive and then add it to ArcMap. If you get files like this, a collection of files, you're going to have to save all of them to the same location individually. You can select them all and right click in Office and say Save As, or here in Google, Gmail, you can hit Download All Attachments. And you need to put all of them in the same location because ArcMap and ArcGIS Pro are going to look for all those files when you add a shapefile. There are only, I think, three files that are required to make up a shapefile, and that is the .shp, the .dbf, and the .shx. You at least need those three, but the more the better, I, because those others have indexes that you're going to need. So we're going back to the file system. And we will, we're going to talk about each one of those types. So the .shp, this one, it contains all of the geographic information for the features of that layer. The .dbf is the file that has all the attribute information. So it contains the fields and the values that are contained in those fields for each feature. The .shx file is an index. And then this .prj is the projection file or the coordinate system that the features are in. The SBN and SBX files are also indices. I think they're for the geographic features, the geographic index for the features. This .xml is the metadata for the layer. And then the CPG, I don't know what it does. I'm going to have to read that. CPG is an optional file that can be used to specify the code page for identifying the character set to be used, whatever that means. So those, all those files constitute a shapefile. You may not have all of those. In fact, you may have more. There's a whole list of other file types that a shapefile could include. If you want to see what other file types there are, I'll put a link to Esri's help page on the shapefile. They go into why you should use one and why you shouldn't, and it's mostly why you shouldn't. Esri has been trying to kill the shapefile forever, I think. Why won't you just... They, it's not an efficient way to store data. It's not a great way to s exchange data. The file geodatabase is much easier to send back and forth, and you can even package up a map so people get the data and the way you have it drawn. And that's a much better way to be sending data back and forth. But here you are, here's your shapefile and all of its files that come with it. Some of the drawbacks of using a shapefile is the size. You can only store two gigabytes worth of data in a shapefile. 
Field names can only be 10 characters long. Shapefiles don't store true curves or parametric curves. To show that, I, I uh, created a line here. And you can, the red line on top is the shape file, and the purple line underneath is the file geodatabase line. If I zoom in here and I select the shape file line and I go to edit vertices, you can see that curve is made up of a lot of vertices to shape that curve. And I created that shape file line by exporting the purple line. So, I mean, you can see it doesn't, doesn't follow the line. It, something's, something's messed up. And I don't know if that's a, a bug right now. I've never seen this where the curves are really skewed like that. But then if I select the purple line and then edit vertices, you can see it's defined by two vertices. And then the radius and arc length or other parameters of the curve are used to draw it. There's no topology in shape files. Like if you have a shared boundary between two polygons and one part of that is a curve, you're going to have a mess trying to get those two polygons to line up. You can only store simple features in shape files, no complex features like road networks, parcel fabrics, subtypes, domains. None of that can be stored in a shape file. You can't have null values in shape files. If I open the tables for these two, so this is my file geodatabase line feature. I have all null values in my fields. If I look at the shape file, it has zeros, not null values. And if you're doing something with calculating fields, that might mess you up. And I think I've seen a lot of memes about null values not being allowed in shape files. Another drawback is a shape file takes three to five times storage space as a file geodatabase with the same features. Unicode text is not supported in a shape file. Also, date fields don't store time, they just store dates. So there's the shape file. Stop using it unless you have to. Every time I get an email request, somebody says, hey, will you send me the shape file for this? I'm like, okay, you asked for it <laughs> and send it to them. I have some complex relationships in my parcel data, so they don't get any of the, the related data. They just get the flat, flat file, the flat table that doesn't have any of the, the uh, relationships with the ownership table or the assessor information. They just get the polygons. So there you go. That's the shape file. If you have any questions about the shape file, let me know down in the comments. I actually put this video together as a favor for somebody who did one of my interviews. I'm still looking for people to interview. So if you want to interview with me, there is a link in the description. Uh, go to that link. It has my schedule of when I'm available to do interviews. It also has a link to buy me a do. So if you find my content helpful, subscribe to the channel, like the videos, watch them to the end and buy me a do using that link. I think that link asks for an email, phone number, and if you don't want to put your email and phone number in there, you don't have to. You can send me a message, that'd be cool. So there you go, shape files. Quit using them unless you have to, and know the limitations when you do. We'll catch you next time. If I have parcel data with a lot of curves in it on right-of-ways, rights-of-way, right-of-ways, rights-of-way.